Now, now, what do you think about this uh, whole flat Earth theory thing that's all over the internet? All right, going back to something that I had put aside um, back in the uh, late eighties, early nineties, when I was looking into a lot of the information that was there in the Lucius Trust and. Uh, uh, an old white gentleman by the name of Boris over there at the Theosophy Lodge when uh, they were giving me old maps, dusty books and stuff for me to look through. Um, we, you have to go back to the fact that it, and again, I have to look at you, I have to look at these things and tell you my history with this particular thing. I first was uh, given information regarding that uh, by two gentlemen that I invited to my gatherings of the masters in Brooklyn. Uh, these are two Europeans uh, by the name of uh, Preston Nichols and uh, Al Bulick. And uh, at the time, I was speaking about the, per the, uh, the perception of, a, of a, what they call flat earth. We knew it as a flat plane, not a flat earth, or a plane of existence. Because, again, we are limited by the language and limited by the education that we've been given to describe the reality that we're in. So I have to speak in words and that that can actually vibrate to the basis of your education. So when people talk about flat Earth, you know, flat Earth, that's just a it's more. It tends to incite the ridiculous in someone's mind. So when I'm speaking about that, and for you to understand the, the sort of flat Earth series, you have to deal with it from the perspective we do at our university. You cannot deal with it based on what you see on the internet. You have to look at it based upon the ancients and not what it is that your education has made of your reality today. You cannot look at knowledge like this through the eyes of the education that they gave to you. You have to go back to the science that the ancestors gave to you thousands upon thousands of years ago to see what that really means. Now, you have to look at it before the time of the, uh, the Vatican and uh, before the time that Christianity through Catholicism began to come to prominence because the origin of the so-called uh, round or globe earth actually happened uh, based upon the Vatican. Um, the arguments regarding that shape of that earth, uh, they, they were still arguing about it up till that time of the 16th century, whether it was flat or round, because they were looking at the information uh, that was put down by the ancient Chemites, the ancient Dravidians, uh, the ancient uh, Olmecs, and everyone who existed on the earth before the European. Now, what they were arguing about was, how many secrets can we actually keep if we put out one or two perspectives? If we keep the flat earth perspective, quote-unquote, how many secrets could leak as a result of that? And can we keep the animal in the cage with that perspective? No. So what they did was they had to hide the information. The Vatican had to make sure that the information was hidden. How did they hide it? They made sure that the so-called conjectures of the day, which is the earth is round, the Copernican one, became the mainstay. So they began to promote that into the lexicon, and because they were running all of Western civilization's education system, they took the Copernican uh, uh, idea, uh, which was to the earth being round, and promoted that into, from that point forward, into the Western education system. So that's all we ever knew. The information that would have led you back to your ancestors, they put on hold or made ridiculous. So that the children in subsequent generations, as I was speaking about that thing about promoting uh, the, 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 blur, the blurring of the gender line, the destruction of gender, that every generation after that, that they've conditioned into that, will only know that as the reality. It's the same thing that happened when they suppressed all information that had to do with what became the Kabbalistic understanding as well as the comedic understanding of how our world or our reality really was. So in injecting that so-called round earth at that time, they then now created the obtuse environment for us to operate in. And uh, since everything from that point forward uh, consolidated knowledge around that, 
no and reintroduction of the ancient information sounds ridiculous. So the, the introduction of ancient information into a Christian church would sound like Satan coming in. So for me to actually speak to you about that, I have to get real deep and metaphysical. Um, the way we teach at our university, and I'm not sure, like you know, what that means, and if it, if it would be uh, open for today, you know, um, I'd have to go to hermetic astrology, and the hermetic system, versus the uh, what we call the um, uh, the tropical system that is dealt with in the in the uh, in the West. Um, if you want to look at it like this. And I can, I'm going to do this very quickly so that people can get an understanding of what it is that I'm looking at and how I see it. Uh, everything is a vibration. Everything is vibration. And if you understood the, the fact that everything is done in waves, these waves each are a point of conditioning for the solidification of what we call divine intent. I'm going to get pretty heavy here taking you into the first, second, and third levels of what we teach. If I want to give you a better access to it, because you couldn't get any other access to what I'm speaking about from the comedic principle, uh, but I would do it so that you could see it through what would probably be the Kabbalistic principle, because the Kabbalistic was actually stolen directly from the comedic principle. There are three principles in God, the Father, Son, the, uh, and the Mother, Father, Mother, Son, and Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or whatever they want to speak about it today. But it was also known as the Ain, okay, what they call Amen, but it's Ain, then there was the Ain Sof, and then there was something called the Ain Sof Ur, which is essentially uh, the, um, the three stages of the expression of the mind of God, okay? Now, in the expression, when there is to be the expression of the mind of God, when intention is looking for manifestation, it deals in consolidating these intentions into waveforms. So the best way to you to see how the earth is actually consolidated is to see it in the chart that created the ten sephirah. And the ten sephiroth essentially give you the first three, and then they go down into the last seven. But to, just to give you an understanding of it so that people can go and do their own um, uh, under, uh, research on it, your Bible, which is taken from Kabbalah, is giving you little hints about that as well when they start speaking about the firmament and they start speaking about the, uh, the different spheres of existence and so forth. Well, the spheres that have that firmament in Kabbalah is what we call the octave. That's the eighth sphere, because the octave essentially is the harmonic upon which God's creation becomes manifest. Otherwise, it's just waveform and intention. Okay? So you are following me. Now, to understand that, you have to understand that by counting it as the eighth sphere, you have to look at it in reverse, because we are actually occupying the realm of Malkuth. The realm of Makuth is the realm of what we see as the consolidated earth plane. And if you were to look back from um, the realm of Malkuth and count eight spaces back from Malkuth upward, you would see it would come to Bina. Okay? Now, Bina is the feminine principle. Counting eight from ten, you go back to Bina. And who's Bina? Bina is the feminine principle. In Kemetic, she is Mut or Nu. She is the mother, the great sea. That's where they talk about the ocean in the Bible, that being the ocean about above. The primal essence filling um, uh, the entire omniverse. And, and it's the fundamental essence of the universe before it becomes solidified. She is the sphere, uh, what can I say? She's the sphere of magnetic cohesion. In other words, nothing can take place outside of this sphere unless it goes through the sphere and becomes magnetized, consolidated. In other words, atoms cannot consolidate into bodies unless it is actually filtered through this particular sphere of existence. And this is the moon. This is moon. She's the stabilizer, the organizer of all life. So when we speak about the firmament, that's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about ten layers, ten different compression zones of, of cosmic activity 
that are pressurizing us into the atmosphere that we see, that we live, move, breathe, and have our being. Okay? So if you want to deal with that, she now is actually above Shu in the ancient Kemetic. Shu is the air. Shu stands for the, the vibrational counter-pressure to Nu. And so that's that vibrational counter-pressure to Nu gives you the atmosphere in which we breathe. So now we're actually giving you how this so-called dome structure that these people on the, day, on, the, on the Internet are speaking about. There's no dome. There are pressure zones of activity where there is a consolidation of intention that we see as magnetism and electricity, and we process them through electricity and magnetism as they manifest as our senses. Okay? So um, just to pretty much give you an understanding about the next stage of if you want to deal with the ninth sphere, which is above the eighth sphere, which is above the firmament, the ninth sphere in Kabbalah would be Chokma. And again, I'm dealing with reverse. This is the secret. You don't just go from the top down. You have to go from the bottom up because that's where you're operating from. You're operating from Malkuth. You're not operating from Kether. You're part of Kether, but you're not operating from there. You have to talk your way back. You have to access your way back to it. That's the process of the creator coming into the knowledge of itself. Okay, so the ninth sphere is that place where, let me see, what can I say? It's the ethereum. Um, it's where the cosmic mind coagulates uh, from its source as light and sound um, into what we call the qualified vacuum of space-time. Ethereum is like where time becomes the qualifying element for all manifested existence. In other words, without the ethereum, there is no time. Time is an element. It's not just you ticking on the clock on your wrist or on your wall. It's an element that consolidates all things into existence. Without time, no existence happens. Okay? So I'm, I'm giving you some real quick things for you to understand about this whole reality that we're in, the flat earth, the whole nine yards. Our globe, what you can see right there, is CGI. It's a computer-generated image. It's animation. It's all Photoshop. There's no real picture of our earth. <laughs> okay? It's all game. So they're never going to show you what it is that they cannot show you from above. Now, of course, let me just say this. Now, they've been killing off a lot of astronomers. A lot of astronomers have been dying. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people dealing from astrophysics have been just yeah. dying, crashing yeah. somebody through. So stab some dude. I think he was an Australian guy. Stabbed him 147 times. That was definitely written. So what I'm looking at now is that whoever's looking up at the sky, based on the fact that these, 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 uh, uh, these periscopes and telescopes are getting 10 times more powerful each time, they're mm -hmm. seeing something that they're not supposed to report back on. Now, the, the trick is to get you to believe that they're looking at Nibiru. So if they're looking at Nibiru, are they actually looking at Nibiru or are they looking at this compression zone? Now, this is the other thing, and I'm going to close out with this so we can move forward. All around the earth as we see it today, there are stories in the ancient text about floods. Floods. Now, above that pressure zone that we spoke about, that pressure zone of the ninth sphere that we spoke about, uh, going into the eighth, that pressure zone of the ninth sphere is compressed hydrogen. This is my theory. It's compressed hydrogen. Now, with the movement of space-time, did we, the reason why we're trapped here and kept in ignorance, did we somehow breach and found a way back to the gods and do mm. something to pollute that area so that what happened was God wound up and pitched a stone and cracked that sphere, the hydrogen, the compressed hydrogen, and it fell to earth 40 days and 40 nights? Now, it's really to think about that. Because they gave you clues, of course. I don't know. Uh, did you ever see that movie, um, Avengers, Age of Ultron? Age of, right, right, right. Remember when Ultron said something? He said, God said, God just got sick and tired of everything, and he just cast a stone. He cast yeah. down a stone. Yeah. And just wiped everything out, and he says he's about to wind up again. Mm. Well, supposedly, Nibiru, or Planet X, or the original Nibiru was actually called uh, Holucubus, I believe. And it was found by a, um, a, uh, a Chilean scientist. And it was this Chilean scientist, I forgot his name, 
uh, it'll probably come back to me, but this Chilean scientist uh, came up with um, uh, this, he saw this thing, Herculeus, uh, her, her Herculeus or Herculeus or whatever his name is, but it was Planet X, and he said it's coming in, and that might be the stone that was thrown to end whatever was going on here because man has become so sophisticated that he's trying to break through that scene again. And the prisoners, you know what they tell you, there's another one called Escape Plan, that movie with uh, Sylvester Stallone. If you look at the metaphysics of Sylvester Stallone's movie, Escape Plan, you see that he was in an inescapable prison, and where was he? He was in the sea. Mm. And he didn't know he was in the waters. Right, right. He broke through to find out where he really was. So are the wardens now, because we broke through the last time and whatever it is we were doing to mess with that space and to mess with the continuum that was created here as an Eden for these souls to come in and enjoy life and to process God's own reality back to himself or itself so that he, she can actually participate in his and herself through us. And are we messing that up? Somebody had gotten into the laboratory and began messing with the, with the chemical formulas and mixtures. Is something getting, are they trying to not get us to see Nibiru was supposed to be coming in March and April, sometime this, this year? Did we see the stone that's been thrown in order to end us, to start us afresh, to start us anew? Or are we actually looking at the firmament, which is the dome of energy, not a dome that's a glass, but a dome of energy that is in the layers of compression that create what we call the third dimension or third density, fourth dimensional uh, consciousness for us to participate in third density. So all of this is part of what we teach at our university. It's, it's, it's you becoming deconditioned or uh, to become deprogrammed and uh, to decompress from the nonsense that has been given to you as your education. Well, wow, man, to, to everybody listening, man, if that didn't make you want to sign up to this brother's university, <laughs> I don't know what will, man. God, I'm glad I got that out of you, Doctor Valentine. Oh, that that was that was amazing, man. Oh man, that was the. I'm, I'm gonna have to after this interview. I'm gonna have to rewind that and listen to that a couple of times, brother. Oh man, you. Woo. It's, it's I mean, you know, we did, I, you know, I couldn't give this back then and and to speak on it, but I had to told the party line, so to speak, from in the early 90s to maintain it because, you know, when people are not ready for it, they're not ready for it. And I was told by these two uh, European gentlemen who made it out there who understood the occult and were dealing with the occult through technology that uh, there are certain things that you're going to have to be very cool with and not say until it's time. So the, I pulled that particular plug and I pulled a couple of plugs, just like I pulled the plug on the AIDS thing when I came out in 1985 and showed that it was a hoax, you know, then my life was threatened, you know, my whole way of uh, dealing with things. I had to back until young people began taking the information that I was able to get out there and began to start, you know, saying, well, hey, look at this, this makes sense, and so forth. But as far as this, you know, you can look at flat earth, but if you do look at it through the eyes of those who are arguing over what science says it is and what it is not, you will never get it. Mm.